you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. What you are about to hear is real. The prophets wrote of a time when the signs of the end would be seen. This is where Bible prophecy and current events collide. This is Unsealed. Uh, yes, my friends, welcome back to Unsealed. Christopher Manti here. Uh, welcome to one and all. If you're listening uh, live on our Spreaker app or on any of the podcasting places that you get such things like uh, Google Play or the Apple App Store, I thank you. I love you. Please share this. Sharing is caring um, more than anything. So thank you for doing that and for being here. If you're watching live, we're simulcasting as well, live streaming on Facebook and YouTube via the uh, Wings of the Eagle network, uh, as well as my personal pages and End Time Church as well. So everybody should be clued in uh, to this today. <clears throat> and so uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been on, so I appreciate your patience. If you were uh, having angst about it, uh, I apologize. I guess it's been about three weeks now. Right before Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, I guess we did our last um, episode. And so please go to uh, unsealedpodcast.com if you've missed anything at all over the past year that we've been doing the show. Um, it gives you full uh, access to every episode, obviously completely free. Um, and then you can reach out from there. You can reach out with uh, there's a contact form built in. There's a donation button because we are brought to you by your offerings and gifts. There is no other way we continue to do this promise um and you have some resources linked there at that page as well including the book called flee to the mountains right here uh the end times for beginners which is a on-demand self-paced online course for you and then of course a free app as well called the end time church app so please go ahead and go there and do all that stuff all right praise the lord so since since we were on last time on this uh, podcast, the radio program. Uh, s- the world has been very busy, right? Especially here in the United States. I happen to be here um, on the East Coast near Washington, D.C. And so I saw all this stuff close up the past couple weeks. And uh, a lot of it made my belly hurt, to be honest with you. Um, and, uh, of course, first and foremost, I care about the church and the state of the body of Christ and my own walk with the Lord. Um, it's not about judging or condemnation or um, any of that. I told you so's or whatever. But obviously, now we have a new president. Yes, we do. And it was fairly decided, in my opinion. But you can disagree. That's fine. Um, but I wanted to share with you a, um, a cautionary tale today a little bit different in fact it's, this is a lot different than what we usually do uh on unsealed which is talking about bible prophecy and how it is being fulfilled in today's events in the world so this does fall under the deception uh false prophet um rubric prophetic uh reality of these end times that we're in um but i wanted to sh- share the story of a man named John Schaefer. And I I wanted to do this because I'm I play the drums, as you may know. Uh and I like the rock and roll music. And um yes, I'm a Christian and yes, believe it or not, I do like the heavy metal music. And that style of music actually does have Christian bands. So Believe it or not, I know a lot of folks don't even believe that's true. Yes, it's true. Um, and so I've always, always, always liked this type of music. 
since I was 10. Literally. I can remember being a 10, 11 year old. Um, really, really just being so excited about this style. Regardless of what they were singing about, it was just very exciting. Um, and awesome and cool, and I wanted to play like that. So, uh, never really left me the love of that, that style of music. So, um, in my college years, 1995, I first heard uh, a band called Iced Earth. Iced Earth. Uh, and the the head of that band, the, the, the brains behind it, was the main guitar player named John Schaefer. And I went, that album called Burnt Offerings, by the way, kind of Christian y. I'm like, oh, are these Christians? Eh, not really, but they were kind of in the middle there. So uh, I loved that, that album. I was going to say record. I really date myself. Um, CD, okay, back then, and tapes. Um, but I loved the guitar playing on that album and the albums that came out after that. I just fell in love with this guy's playing. He, everything he does is like golden to my ears. Um, it's phenomenal. I wish, when I picked up a guitar that I have in my basement, I wish I could play what he does. I'm sure you could relate if you're a fan of uh, any kind of rock bands. Um, anyway, I love him. I love him till this day. Uh, everything he's doing is great. I love it. Um, and I also got to know his opinions on things. Some of it is directly in the lyrics of the band, and not about the. He's into some of the you know the supernatural stuff and you know God and the devil and and behaviors and um you know typical metal stuff but then there was also a patriotic pro-american streak that would come out every once in a while and i really identified with that i said oh well you don't get many many bands talking about this either i mean you don't talk you know many aren't talking about jesus and not many are patriotic for whatever reason they're just very rebellious about everything these metal bands and um but John was different, and um, even though they had different singers and different members of Ice Earth over the years, he was the one consistent lyric lyricist and songwriter. So it just would come out every once in a while. And then in two thousand four, I've been a huge fan now. Then all the late nineties and the early two thousands, everything they did, I was so excited about. Um, and once in a while, again, you'd hear this patriotism come out in the songs. But then in 2004, he released, obviously, 9-11 happened in, in 2001. And that did two things. Number one, it inspired John to write a whole album full of patriotic type of stuff. And it also caused the singer of the band to leave because he felt compelled to um, be involved in like national security policing type of stuff. He was too old, I guess, for the armed forces uh, to start in that, but he became a police officer. And he's still one to this day, by the way. The singer, not John. He actually lives quite near to me where I live. Anyways, um, so after 9-11, John uh, basically wrote an entire album called The Glorious Burden about the patriotic side of him. And this is what I want to lay out first as a foundation. I'm calling this From Patriot to Prisoner. The cautionary tale of John Schaefer. So this is where he began, or our understanding about his thinking um, was in 2004, The Glorious Burden. Let me read you some of the titles to the songs. First of all, the opening track is a, is a heavy metal version of the Star Spangled Banner, which is awesome. It's amazing. Um, so there's that. Then uh, the song called Declaration Day, which is about the Declaration of Independence and the men who declared that that day and what it meant and um, what they were thinking and feeling. It's pretty, It's again, it's pretty rad. Um, then a song about 9-11 itself called When the Eagle Cries, and that's based on a famous photo, actually, that I have in my office, uh, if you might have seen it, is a twin tower smoking and uh, an eagle transposed over it with a tear in its eye. Um, so that's about that day itself. And there's also the next 
uh, which is the attack, the day of the attack, which is when the eagle cries, and then the response to it, which is getting revenge uh, for it in military uh, attack, uh, in the song is called The Reckoning, Don't Tread on Me. And now, don't tread on me. Okay, now this is when the, the, the conscience, the con- no, the consciousness of the right-wing folks of America, like me, um, began to, you know, study history more and to look into these things. And the Don't Tread on Me um, banner or, or saying, you know, was, again, part of the Revolutionary War um, and saying how, you know, you can't, don't tread on me, we'll kick your butt, basically. You know, we're independent colonies <clears throat> and all that stuff. Anyway, so the reckonings about the re- the response to Mr. Bin Laden, uh, etc. About the decision to go to war, basically, after that. Um, he wrote a song about Valley Forge on that album, of course. Again, going back to the Revolution and George Washington um, and his army. And then a song called Gettysburg. <laughs> Of course, it's about the Civil War um, and the great battle of that time. Um, uh, and also one I didn't write down that I just remembered called Green Face. Excuse me for my phone. Uh, Green Face is about the Marines and the Army, I guess. Uh, again, who participated in the attacks in Afghanistan um, and Iraq. So, again, it was honoring. It wasn't d- disrespecting any of these things or, or people. Um, it was just showing that side of, of John Schaefer. Uh, then he wrote a couple albums that had nothing to do with anything uh, patriotic, you know, one or two songs. Um, we kind of faded uh, that. But then, he's. Back in uh, in 2010 and 2011, Iced Earth was kind of on a little break. And he wrote two albums called uh, with a new band that he just created. Basically, it was he and himself. Uh, I guess he hired a drummer, but that was basically all him. Called Sons of Liberty. And so, if you know what that means, the Sons of Liberty, um, again, was a Revolutionary War um, phrase. And just what the fighters basically called themselves right it was a group and sons and daughters of liberty anyways um so now he's really staying and and harping on this um side of things which is a little different now right (laughs) it's a little different now um and here are some of the lyrics on that Uh, those albums, or some of the um, content. Uh, The album's called Brush, the first album's called Brush Fires of the Mind. What's that about? I I believe that's Thomas Jefferson. Um, And it's about once you understand that you get a revelation, basically, and you can light a brush fire in one, and then you spread the truth to another, and you spread it to another, and you spread it to another, you get a Brush fire, and basically you have a revolution of something. Um, so now that this is different to me, this is more. This is a different stage, okay, of patriotism. Going back to you know two hundred fifty years ago or two hundred plus years ago. Uh, then the Sons of Liberty album, Brush Fires of the Mind. The first song is called Jekyll Island. Uh, if you know what that is. Again, these are all real things and historical type of things. Jekyll Island uh, was is a Georgia, um, an island off Georgia's coast, where apparently uh, it was decided by a small group of men to invent the Federal Reserve. And this, to John and to many folks, maybe to you, um, was the really beginning of the end of America. Um the Fed, okay? And so he hates the Federal Reserve. This is not a John Schaefer production, okay? Ron Paul and a bunch of very extreme libertarians also had been saying this for years. Um, And so basically he hitched his cart to them from now on. Oh, forgot to mention, 
when that Gloria's Burden album came out in 2004, he did interviews and things where he, he just said he was very happy at the election result that year, which was George W. Bush being reelected. So he was a dyed-in-the-wool, you know, conservative, voted for Republicans, uh, patriotic type of guy. A lot of you and me, I voted for George W. Bush in 2004, too. Um, can relate to him. But now this he's becoming un, more unrelatable to uh, m- most folks. Um, I'm talking about ending the Fed and, and, and Ron Paul's version of um, Republicanism. Okay, this is a very different vision. Um, so Jekyll Island's about that. Then Don't Tread on Me was a song. Now, the Don't Tread on Me was a subtitle to the previous album. Now it's all, all about Don't Blank With Me, okay? Or I'm going to shoot you. That's what it means. Um, false Flag was the next song. False Flag is, again, a very... is is a real... Incident that's happened once or twice, literally, in the history of the nation. But, especially on the libertarian, paranoid side of conservatism, every major event now is called a false flag. Everything. 9-11, Sandy Hook, um, any event in the Middle East, anything. Anything in Israel, everything in Iran, everything in Iraq. Um... Every terrorist attack is a false flag operation. Well, false flag means you did it on purpose or you're deceiving on purpose and you're doing it to justify a, a response, another action that you wanted to take anyway. But So you set this thing up to give yourself legitimacy. It's a government thing. It's, a, um, it's an anti-government thing. When you say false flag, you're blaming the government, which includes the military, for lying and setting up um, either lying about the incident completely, making it up, or that they you did it yourself and you blamed someone else. In other words, a different flag was on the ship than the one who it actually belonged to, hence the name. False flag. Um, so that's another title. Our Dying Republic was the next title. This is 2010. Um, Indentured Servitude is the next title. <laughs> Again, going back to you know, the revolutionary times and slavery and indentured servants, if you know what the difference is in those terms. Tree of Liberty was the next song. Oh, that sounds nice, Tree of Liberty. Well, that comes from an old phrase that said, the Tree of Liberty must at times be refreshed with the blood of tyrants. Or is it blood of patriots? Hang on, I'm going to find out right now. Tree of Liberty, quote. The Tree of Liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. That's the full quote. That's Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Um, So now we're talking about literally bloodshed. That means fighting, shooting people, people dying to overthrow things. You're tyrants, right? And if you're a real patriot, you're the one who's going to bleed. Literally. Feeling helpless, question mark, is another song. Because again, this is how um, many of these folks, maybe you, feel. Especially without Jesus, you guys. Without the Lord, you're going to feel helpless the further we go. It's just true. You have to have an anchor for your soul. You can't depend on man and his whatever. Anyway, feeling helpless, another song, The Cleansing Wind. The Cleansing Wind. Uh, of course, that meaning revolution and revelation in the mind and revolution with your hands. Um, another song, We the People. Okay, again, easy, like calling to unite as we the people. Okay, M- mind control. Another one. Again, this is now we're going into real paranoia about controlling your mind. Uh, and Molan Labe is the final one. Molan Labe, which is what? A Latin for basically come and take my guns over my dead body. Again, which is a theme and a meme and a, an expression that a lot of militant uh, groups use. 
you you might see it uh, an image of like um uh, like a like a like a iron um face mask like an old style like a roman um soldier would wear or a, a gladiator that's the kind of the symbol molan lobe and made probably with handguns next to the mask or the shield headgear uh anyway just giving you a backdrop on that uh so that's where it comes from and that's where john was now all of a sudden in 2010 2011 talking about ending the fed and uh, guys a lot of folks are in this but i was in this i was in this End the fed around the same time by the way um I guess a little before this. And the Fed, uh, things like, do your research. And that's one of the lyrics in Jekyll Island. Do your research, you will see. If it, that sounds like QAnon. Because it's a, a, um, a typical cult response to you saying that's not true. Do your research. Do your research. Um, libertarian paranoia. And look, I'm a, and and taking up arms, okay, T- literally taking up guns to shoot and bleed and die, because you're a true patriot, and only true ones will die. Um, that's where he was going mentally, okay, ten years ago. Um, but my own personal walk, it was more the late two thousands where I kind of was involved in this, and then kind of threw it off around the time that this album came out, this Sons of Liberty album. And I'm like, you know what? John, um, I'm not liking this. In fact, I'm seeing some real spiritual issues here. Um, If there is truth in what you're saying, it's totally obscured and you're totally taking it to the wrong level. And you're putting a lot of lies in there too. You're believing a lot of lies. Um, And again, back in when I was involved in politics, I was stumping for working for the campaign of Herman Cain. Okay, Herman Cain... Uh, the 2008, um, I'm sorry, 12 cycles that began around 2010. Um, back 2010, 2011, when these albums came out, is when I started working in these campaigns and the Tea Party. Remember that whole thing? 2008, 2010. I was in there. I was there. I was at rallies. I was involved. I was getting people together, okay? Um, and then uh, 2011, Herman Cain, I was fully poured into that. Now, he was a Christian, he was a conservative all the way, but he was a believer first, and so I thought that was important as a uh, to separate out from these more liber- libertarian paranoia types. But guys, I'm telling you, I was in Philadelphia, the cradle of liberty, right? Uh, in uh, Just outside where the Liberty Bell is, if you've ever been there, there's a big park. Um, so one day there was a, a rally and all the, a lot of presidential candidates that year we're going to have their booth set up, okay? I, I was the one, me and one other partner, uh, we set up the Herman Cain booth. Right next to us was the Ron Paul booth. And these guys were insane. I mean, they had cameras, they had uh, uh, tons of flags and stuff to hand, hand out, and they were very aggressive, extremely aggressive, uh, saying these same types of things that I was reading about on these albums. And the Fed, and the Fed. Uh, and if you don't agree with us, then you're the enemy. Cult talk, okay? Um, uh, and I very clearly, I remember one of these guys who came to my booth and started asking, what is Herman Cain's position on this? He's a pro-Fed guy. He worked for the Fed. True, he did. Now all of a sudden I have to defend his work, you know, 15 years ago in Kansas City at a bank. Uh, but yep, that's what I had to do. And now, then he sticks a camera in my face. As if to, you know, give me a gotcha moment. Oh, the Herman Cain people are clueless. They're stupid. They're, they don't know who they're supporting. This guy's a Federal Reserve plant and uh, don't vote for him. Right? It was extremely weird and like off-putting. And like this is all of a sudden we're in the spiritual war. And like, what is this? Um, anyway, so it was that whole world now encroaching, right? And there was a whole, it's, it's never got the, you know, the full support of anyone until 
I mean, Trump was never that guy. He was never an in the Fed guy. Obviously, he's totally not that. He was opposed by Rand Paul, the son of Ron Paul, uh, in the primary. So they never really got there. But a lot of the folks who were with him could glom on to the Trump thing. And that's what happened. Um, anyway, so what about John Schaefer? So he wrote all these albums and whatever. You think what you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, God bless you. Have a nice day. Um, however, then after this, he kind of you know, didn't write, write much about it lyrically in his songs, but he started going to three percenters things. Three percenters um, are a group of what they would consider armed patriots. They think only 3% of the population defended themselves and participated in the Revolutionary War. That's highly debatable, by the way. Um, but anyway, that's how they see themselves now. They're the, only one, they're the ones who are going to actually do the shooting. They come in the vest. They come with the big guns. They come with the... Anyway, so John Schaefer is now a part of them and shows up at the end of 2020 in these Trump rallies, Stop the Steal rallies, in 3 percenter gear. Uh, with a vest on, a bulletproof vest, or some type of protection, uh, anticipating he's going to be attacked. And I'm sure he has a weapon somewhere. And then we see the result, which was three weeks ago, January the 6th, he participated. John Schaefer, the heavy metal guitar player, the guy who was just a patriot through all these years, now shows up at the Capitol with the same vest on, with the same 3 percenter stuff on, with a can of mace, excuse me, bear spray, which is pepper spray meant to uh, get bears away from you out in the wild. So it's, it's effective against humans. Um, and there's pictures of him shouting top of his lungs with the bear spray in his hand, attacking police officers. John Schaefer, same guy. He moved from... Patriot to all of a sudden now, this past Monday, January the 18th, I read this. Eister's John Schaefer makes first court appearance, will remain in jail until at least Friday. That's today, the 22nd. Eister the guitarist John Schaefer made his first court appearance in connection with his role in the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Schaefer turned himself into police. He lives in Indiana has been moved to Marion County Jail. He will go in front of a U.S. magistrate on Friday who could who could release him on bail. Uh, he turned himself in on Sunday afternoon, the 17th, per the FBI. Per the FBI's reporting, Schaefer was among the rioters who sprayed United States Capitol Police officers with bear spray uh, as part of their efforts to push the officers back inside the Capitol and breach the Capitol building themselves. This is just yet another proof that Antifa did not do this. Okay? You did this, conservative America. We did this. Uh, Schaefer was photographed and captured on surveillance video carrying the bear spray and engaging in verbal altercations with Capitol Police officers inside the Capitol building. Schaefer is seen holding what the FBI describes as clear sunglasses in one photograph and bear spray in others. The sunglasses are to protect his eyes from the spray. From his own stuff. Um... These are the six charges Schaefer is facing, according to the FBI's paperwork. No, and you can see this on the website. It's true. Um, um, sorry, wife texted me. Very important. Uh, number Charge number one, knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority. Two, disrupting the orderly conduct of government business, which, of course, that was the point of the riot of invading the House so they would stop uh, validating the electors so Biden would never win. That's what they thought they were doing. Uh, three, knowingly engages in an act of physical violence against any person or property in any restricted building or grounds. That means he's actually physically attacking people. Violent entry and disorderly conduct in a Capitol building. Engage in an act of physical violence in a Capitol building. Six, parade, demonstrate, or picket in a Capitol building. So the six different charges now he's being accused of or being arraigned on. Um, 
On January 8th, FBI released over 40 photos of people who were suspected of unlawful entry and violent insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. Among them was a picture of Schaefer. In the photo, he could be seen at the front of a mob sporting a hat from the Oath Keepers. I'm sorry, the Oath Keepers, not the three percenters in this one. The Oath Keepers are similar organization made up of police officers, military folks who saying, I'm not going, I'm going to keep my oath to defend the Constitution and not not listen to unlawful orders. In other words, anything that they personally perceive as illegal or against the Constitution, they don't have to take it and they can fight you. Uh, sporting a hat from the Oath Keepers, an anti-government militia group, wearing black leather fingerless tactical gloves, and yelling at someone out of the frame. Schaefer is believed to be one of at least 200 people who are being investigated by the FBI for their role in the insurrection. Uh, he has not said anything publicly, but his bandmates in Iced Earth put out a statement opposing the insurrection, which it's true they did. Um, and earlier in the month, a newspaper uploaded a video interview it conducted with Schaefer at November... At a November Washington, D.C. demonstration supporting Trump and protesting the 2020 presidential election results. In the chat, the musician said that, quote, a group of thugs and criminals hijacked this country a long time ago. Listen now. This is this is typical uh, uh, end the Fed uh, paranoia, um, uh, libertarian extremism slash QAnon. This is all tied together. A group of thugs and criminals hijacked this country a long time ago and warned that, quote, they are messing with the wrong people here because now we see you and you're going down, mark my words, quote. Schaefer also seemingly threw his support behind Trump, saying, quote, he's not your typical Republican and claiming that he's, quote, dealing with a criminal mafia. This is QAnon. He's dealing with a criminal mafia that has been in the shadows running the world, frankly, for a very long time. This is John Schaefer's quote. They want to destroy all of our sovereignty and bring about global government. We are not having it. It will not happen. There will be a lot of blood shed. If it comes down to that, trust me, the American people will not go for that bull bleep. Once they understand what's actually happening. So that's where we're at. Nobody wants this, but they're pushing us to a point where we have no choice. No choice but to start shooting and shed our blood. During an interview in 2017, Schaefer identified himself as an anarchist and referred to the federal government as a criminal enterprise. During that same interview, Schaefer stated the 2016 election was rigged. (sighs) Anyways, um... Globalist, communist system, it will not happen, global government. Okay. This is where a lot of Christians fall for the lie. They see global government, and they're like, oh, it's in the Bible, therefore I have to care about it. I've done, I mean, we've done a lot of videos and teaching on this. The Bible doesn't say there's going to be a global government. It doesn't say anything about communism. You're being lied to. And you're believing it. Because you're tying in the flesh with the spiritual realities and the actual things the Bible says is going to happen, which is not global anything. Sorry. All right. Um, That is that is the cautionary tale. So he, John Schaefer, a man I am a huge fan of what he does with, in his professional life. Still, uh, I feel like I can give a unique perspective on this since I have been following him for so long. Um, And can appreciate where he comes from. I was there. I'm still there to a degree. Um, But I, you know, thank God, uh, he's pulled me out of politics to see the multitude of demonic influences involved. I don't care if it doesn't mean you have to be part of one of the big parties. You can be a anarchist or a, you know a, a independent militia like Mr. Schaefer or all these other dudes, and be deceived by Satan and the demonic forces, and that's what's happened. Um, so it's please, please, please rethink this because I know many of you are in this spot like he is. 
Maybe you weren't there on January 6th, but the next time you might be. And you might think, oh, i got to stir up, store up food and water and fight with my last bullet. That's not what you're called to as a Christian. I'm speaking to believers. It doesn't mean we don't be wise. It doesn't mean we don't defend our families. It means don't dwell on this. We have the gospel to care about. That's, that's the war. It doesn't matter what happens to America, friends. It doesn't. Um, and divided we fall. Okay, this I'm gonna I'm gonna. This is a commenter on YouTube right now. So forgive me for. Um. On the uh, unsealed uh, podcast side here. By the way, we're gonna wrap up right now. Uh, but I will take a comment live here. Makes for good radio anyway, right? Now, let, I'm just going to read the comment as as it is, and hopefully you can see how ridiculous this all is. Divided We Fall says, by the way, what's your real name? Can we have that? This is part of the problem. I show my real name everything I do, every time. Am I an idiot, or maybe you're afraid? Uh, Divided We Fall says, Cambridge Analytica algorithms created... Trump's cult. I don't even know what that means. Expendable media sources such as Newsmax, One America News Network, and Parler picked up where Cambridge Analytica algorithms left off creating Trump's cult. Well, they certainly enhanced... Uh, see, you can't create a cult, right? You, have, you, have, you need people to believe it. You need followers. The cult leader... Uh, an algorithm didn't create a cult, okay? The, a personality creates a cult. Spirits create cults, um, not, uh, not algorithms. Um, anyway, uh, continuing with the comment, we truly owe Donald Trump a debt of gratitude for putting a red hat on the swamp. I, I'm sorry, I just don't know what that means. Um... I just don't. Anyway, God is not the author of confusion, folks, but of peace. He did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. If you serve him, not America, um, or anything else, the call to patriotism in itself is not wrong or bad, but nationalism, for most folks, they have no idea what the difference is, that there is a difference. I don't know what the difference is. I mean, I can give you definitions, but those don't mean what actually real people feel, real humans believe. When you say you're a patriot, it means you're a nationalist. It means you're a nation above all. Where we can't be there as Christians. Ever. I don't care what nation it is. Never. Never above Jesus. Never. My, may my nation burn to the ground before I deny Jesus and not follow in his footsteps as his disciple. Burn to the ground. Don't care. Why would I care about Russia, China, America, you know, the UK, you name it. God has put his eyeballs on Israel, okay? That's who he called out. That's the land he cares about. That's what Satan cares about. That's what the one world government, this is what the the conspiracy of the end times is about, which is against Israel and the Jews. Against them, not against you, Westerner, 5,000 miles away, who probably has a little hatred for the Jews, who thinks they're behind it all, who thinks they're the global government. Don't say you don't. Um, and Ina says, thank you for your words. You're helping me get back on track. Well, bless you for saying so. Um, see, even through, I doubt this sister has ever heard of Iced Earth or John Schaefer or heavy metal music is not part of her life. I'm thinking, maybe I'm wrong, um, but for most most people watching this, probably it has no no impact their life uh, whatsoever. But here we are, and so um, take caution. All right, guys, uh, take caution from this tale um, of Mr. Schaefer. Don't go to prison. For, go to prison for your witness of Jesus. That's it. 
right? When Paul, oh, but Apostle Paul asserted his rights, and he called upon his rights. Therefore, rights are matter important to fight for. Paul asserted, if you read the book of Acts, you actually read it, um, it's perfectly clear that Paul was exercising his right as a Roman citizen in order to go to jail. Did you notice? Yes, he wants to get out of Jerusalem because he wants to go witness to the king. He wants to go to Caesar to witness to Caesar. He knows he's not going to come out. Holy Spirit told him you're not going to come back. You understand? Um, that's the type of spiritual battle we should be in, which is, yes, prison, yes, shed blood, but for Jesus alone, not for a country. That's, that's because the devil's in there, right? He's going to get distract you and get you off track. And the flesh will do that. Your own flesh will do that. And your fellow believers will do that because there's so much deception. There's so much deception out there to this day. To this day. Today. This weekend. This past couple days. And on Sunday, you're going to see churches all over America probably say, be in delusion land. And God knows what's going to happen. Uh, Hey, Gene. Right, right, Gene. Uh, final word on this, Gene. Uh, excellent point. Don't dwell on this. There's also there is always prudence in being prepared, but all those who take up the sword or bullets in this case will perish by the sword or those bullets. Uh, so said Jesus himself, Matthew twenty six. Correcto, correcto, correcto. Um, that's I couldn't agree with you more, Gene. There's just just so well said. Uh, and also the follow-up, I also agree with 100%. Don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to self-defense or the Second Amendment. Agreed! Neither am I. Um, but I don't believe our guns will save us during the tribulation, the Great Tribulation. No doubt about it. Correcto. Uh, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> you think Satan and his angels can be defeated by a gun? <laughs> Come on, guys. Because uh, that's who we'll be dealing with to be honest with you, right? Great deception. Great deception. And by the way, he's not going to even need to be fought. Uh, most, um, most of the world will go for the lie, okay, which is he's performing miracles. There's a false prophet doing great things that no one's ever seen before. That's going to be enough. They're going to fall in apostasy. They're not going to fall by the, even by the sword necessarily. So they've already denied Jesus. And that's the, that is the ultimate end of the line for this type of thinking that John Schaefer is involved in. I pray for his salvation. I hope you uh, um, agree with me on that. I do. I, I, I truly do. Uh, he's had a Catholic background. Um, he left the church a long time ago, and now he needs a true experience of the Holy Spirit and true saving power of the hand of God and the Son of God face to face and to repent and confess and be saved. And so it's my prayer for him and for you if you are not saved as well. Um, the Lord is coming, uh, and it's not going to be pleasant uh, for those who he doesn't know. So until next time, this is Pastor Christopher Manti for Unsealed. Love you all so much. Come Lord Jesus. To hear previous episodes, to obtain resources, and to support this ministry, visit Unsealed podcast.com because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold but he who stands firm to the end will be saved